So today we're going to talk about quizzes. So to create a quiz, I'm going to go over here in my sidebar and I'm going to go down to the quizzes section. And from here, I can hit the plus quiz button to create a new quiz. Now, it's probably going to ask you if you want to create what's called a classic quiz or a new quiz. Um, classic quizzes are going away. Um, they have announced literally a couple of years ago that um, Canvas is no longer going to support classic quizzes. Um, they haven't disappeared yet, but it's coming. So I would recommend from this point forward, everything you make, um, use a new quiz. It actually has more um, response options and things that you can do. And if you want, you could tell it to always remember that for this course. So every quiz I make, it won't ask me. But in this case, I'm going to create a new quiz. And it's going to ask me just some basic assignment information first. So this is no different than any other assignment. And so this is my states quiz. And then I can choose a point total. Maybe I'm going to have 10 questions and I want it to be 10 points each. So maybe I will do 100 points. Choose the assignment group. Choose who I want to assign it to. And then I'm going to go ahead and click not save and publish yet. I want to go ahead and build this quiz. So quizzes work a little bit differently because you build the actual quiz within Canvas itself. So Canvas has its own quiz builder, which looks like this. Um, it's somewhat intimidating to look at for the first time, but really uh, it has more options than most people need. So it's pretty simple to be able to create one. So if I were to go to my build option here, here's my state quiz, I can give instructions if I want. Um, but if I hit the plus sign, this is going to ask me to insert a new quiz uh, question. So there's a lot of different types. Um, you have your multiple choice, like you're familiar with, um, true, false. Um, but there's a lot of different options that you don't get in traditional things like Google Form quizzes or um, some of the other tools out there. So let's say I wanted to start with a multiple choice. Works the way you would expect. Um, there is a spot for multiple choice question title. This is up to you, it's not mandatory. This would be a title for the question. Question stem is where you'll actually put the question. So it's up to you if you wanna have a title, maybe I'm just gonna have a title and have the, you know, a section of questions about um, the 13 colonies or something like that. I could give it a title to go along with it or I could just say, you know, which, and then down below is where I'm gonna type in all my answers. And so I can choose how many different answers that I want. It gives you four by default, but I can delete some if I don't want that many, or I can add more if I need to. Um, so if I was going to, I could say maybe California. And then if I wanted to grade it for me, all I have to do is click whichever one is the right answer. So if I click California is the right answer, then it will automatically grade this question when a student takes the quiz and uh, lets the student know if they got it right or wrong. Now, I do have a few options that I can choose for every question. I can choose whether they have access to a, key, a calculator if I want. Um, I could choose to vary the points based on answer. So if I do this, I could actually choose and give partial credit to individual uh, answers. So if they chose this answer, they get this many points, this answer, they get this many points, and so on. Or I can even have it shuffle the answer options so they don't always show up in the right answer to help prevent cheating. Um, at the bottom, there's an option that says add to banking. This would be if I wanted to save this question for future quizzes, I could choose to do that, but it's entirely up to you. The only other thing I have to worry about in this question is the total points. So if I'm going to make a 10 question quiz and I want it to be worth 100 points total, I'm going to make this worth 10 points. And one final option is I have this little comment box right here. If I click on this, this gives me the ability to give a specific uh, section of text to students if they get the correct answer or if they get an incorrect answer. Um, or you can give them just general feedback based on whatever it is that they wanted. So from here, you could literally post, um, you know, congratulations, that's a great job. Or you could say, hey, that's not correct. And you could even provide them with a link or a video or something that you would insert into this box that they would have to go through and watch um, or to remind them where they will find that answer in order to help them out if you choose to. And then when I'm done with that question, I simply click done. And this is what it's going to look like. 
And so now I can hit the plus sign again to add another question. And then again, here is where I can pick and choose what other type of questions that I want. Now, a couple interesting ones that I can choose from, there is an option for file upload. Um, again, this works similarly as it did before. This gives students the ability to upload a document um, into your quiz. So maybe you've had them do an essay question as a separate file where they've typed it in Google Docs and they need to submit it, or maybe you had them take a photo of something and they need to submit that photo as part of this quiz. Um, this is an option for them to be able to do that. Another interesting quiz type um, is the ability to do fill in the blanks. So fill in the blanks are interesting because you can actually type a question um, and in that question, you just simply put quotation marks or single quotes around it. And that will show you number one, what the right answer is. And number two, that's where the blank will be. In this particular example, um, they have roses are red and violets are blue. Um, if I just simply copied and pasted that into my question stem, the hashtag or the uh, the little uh, apostrophe in before or after or the back tick, if you will, um, that's the blank. So kids won't see the word red or the word blue. Those where the blanks will show up. And then down here, I can choose how I want to give them um, options. I could have it be a drop down. I could have them have a word bank or just open entry where they could type in any word that they want. And then for text max, if I click, I can choose it has to contain the word red. I could say close enough, which will help with some of the spelling errors that might uh, show up in a bad word. I can say it has to match exactly with case uh, and uh, spelling and everything. Or I could even give um, any a multiple correct answers if I wanted to. So I could include those misspellings if I want. And then click done. You know, another really cool question type is one called hotspot. Now the way hotspot works is this will give you the ability to add an image. Um, and with that image, you're gonna have a hotspot that students have to identify. So I have a map here that I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna drag and drop that map right into my question that looks like this. And here is where I have to draw the hotspot. This is where um, they have to click or select in order to get the right answer. So for example, I could just say which one of these colonies is Virginia, and then they, I would go through and I would create either a square, an oval, or a polygon-shaped um, hotspot that they would have to click inside of in order to mark the correct territory. Now, because this is an irregular shape, I would probably choose to use the polygon tool here, and I could literally just click and click and click as many times as I want to create this hotspot that students will click on to make sure that there are no misclicks and they get the exact irregular shape. And then now again, choose that any click within the hotspot will receive full points and then hit done. And this is what that question looks like. Now for a student, they won't see the hotspot, um, but that as long as they click anywhere in there, it'll be marked correct. Again, if I hit the plus sign, I can add another question type. Um, and I have the ability to do uh, matching questions where I would simply choose, um, again, a question and an answer, and they would have to match those two. Um, I could also throw in distractors, which are questions or answers that are not correct, just to try to throw them off so that there's not one exact uh, match for every answer where there could be multiple um, non-answers in there that they would choose. And again, Depending on the question type, I can choose whether to give partial credit if they get some of them or not and control how I wanted to be able to do that. Now I can also choose to do what's called an ordering question. And the way an ordering question is, this allows you to enter multiple um, options and they have to put them in an order. So for example, um, I can say, put these colonies in order by the time they were ratified or by the time they were um, created. And so at the top, I could label this the first colony and the bottom label would be last uh, colony and then I would list the colony names and they would just have to sort them in order. Now, when you do it, you're going to put them in the correct order so that um, it knows what the right answer is. But again, when the student gets it, it is going to randomize those answers so the student won't be able to see the order. They will have to put them in that correct order in order to receive points. 
Now with many of these question types, you can tell it to automatically grade um, just by simply choosing what the correct answer is. Now the one option it can't do automatic grading on is essay questions. Now, so if I do an essay question, um, what that's going to do is this allows me to enter my question or prompt, and then I could give them a rich content editor, which allows them to insert images or insert links or things like that, just like you would get when you were going to um, create an assignment. Um, I can, again, choose whether there's a calculator. I could have it show word counts or word limits where they have to keep it under a certain limit um, and do a spell check if I want. Now, the way this works is this will show the student, um, if you choose, what grade they get on the quiz without the um, essay question. And all you will have to do to grade this quiz, it'll grade everything that is gradable by Canvas automatically. And you will simply have to open it up, choose what grade to give them for their essay question, and then hit submit. And then it'll automatically add that total to their final quiz grade and go to the next student just like you would in a speed grader. Now, another cool question type is categorization. Um, this allows you to put things in categories and I can simply have um, different um, categories that show up and they will have to put things in the category it belongs in. So maybe if I was gonna do uh, like the three branches of government, I could list category one would be judicial, um, executive, and legislative, and then the answers that would be below, I would type the correct answers in, but the students would get a randomized uh, version of that that they would have to pick and choose and move these um, things under the right category. So they would have to put the different um, jobs of each branch of government under the right category when they create that. Now for the math teachers out there, there's a couple question types specifically for math. There is a formula question. Um, this question allows you to uh, set a variable. So you can give a question and in that question, you can put a variable in there uh, with again, apostrophes or back ticks around it. And then that will make that the variable, you put all your information in there and the students have to solve for that variable. You can choose how exact their answer has to be. Um, as far as margin of error once they solve it and so on. Um, again, very math specific, but uh, a nice option to have. There's another option in there for numeric, uh, which again, works very similar. Um, it's just uh, simply giving a question and then you're looking for uh, an answer. And again, it's up to you whether or not you wanted to get, require an exact answer or if you want to give it a margin of error, or if they're close, they get a certain amount of points, or within a range, or, or so on, you can, uh, you can choose to do that if you need. And then the last question type here um, is the one underneath the line, because this one's a little bit different. This is what's called a stimulus question. And the way this works is you have the ability to insert some kind of a stimulus that they are going to look at and then have questions related to that specifically. So um, what this looks like is up to you. So for example, there's a title, there's an, uh, some instructions if you want, but that content could be um, a video. So I could insert media uh, or a video link in here if I want. It could be maybe a bunch of text where there's maybe some misspellings in the text and they have to answer some questions. What would be the main idea of this paragraph? Similar to what you would see on like a map test um, type question where you would have multiple questions about the same passage or something like that. Um, it could also involve a picture. Maybe you're going to insert a picture and you're asking students uh, to be able to do that. So you would insert the content of your question here or the content of uh, what they're going to look at, your stimulus here, and then down below is where you're going to choose um, to have questions. You can have the questions either be below it or to the right, uh, which is kind of like a side-by-side -side thing here and then click done. And then that question would have the stimulus here, and then now I have the option to attach questions to it. So this is where, again, I can choose any one of these types of questions that's gonna go along with this particular stimulus or this particular thing that you want them to watch. So again, a very Edpuzzle-like option. It doesn't give you all the specific options where you could have it um, you know, make sure they've watched the video before they answer the questions or whatever, but it's a similar, very map-like question type. Now, whenever I'm done with all of my questions and I've finished making my um, entire um, quiz and I'm happy with it, now I want to go up here to settings. 
And settings just gives you some overall quiz options that you may want to consider. So you can choose whether to suff shuffle the questions, shuffle the answers. Um, you can choose whether they see all the questions on one page or one at a time if you want them to do that. You can give students an access code where they have to have this code to uh, take the quiz. So you could do something where I could release the quiz early, um, but students wouldn't be able to get into it without typing in that code, which I'll give them in class, which will prevent them from being able to seeing the questions ahead of time. I can choose to give a time limit if I want. And then any of these, no matter what I choose, it gives me different options that go along with that. Um, if I choose to filter IP addresses, there's actually an option here. You can check with your DTS to um, have it only work inside the building, which would prevent other people from outside of a specific area from being able to access it. Uh, if you didn't want to allow kids to take it at home, you can choose to allow a calculator. You can choose to allow multiple attempts. Um, this is kind of cool. You can choose whether or not you want to allow them to have a specific number of attempts, either unlimited or limited, or you can choose exactly how many attempts they get and then tell it to keep the highest or an average or um, maybe have a waiting period between attempts like you would for a driver's license test where you couldn't take it back to back to back over and over again. You have to wait at least a day. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. And then you can control, finally, what options students get to choose. So once students have finished the quiz, do you want them to see the points there were awarded? Um, how many points possible? Do you want them to see the um, item and questions? Do you want them to see what they put on that answer? Do you want them to show whether which ones they got correct or incorrect? This is where you control exactly what it is that they see. Now, once kids have taken the quiz, I have some pretty cool reports I can use to look at every single um, quiz question to see which ones were the hardest or not. And I can even choose to give points back or to throw out a question here if I need to. And then finally, there's an option here to moderate. And this will show me all of the individual students and what they did. It'll show me what the, uh, how many attempts they had, what their score was, how long it took each one of them. Um, and I'll be able to see all that with each of my students. And I can go over here to moderate. Um, and I can choose to give students another additional attempt, or I could make a time adjustment for one specific student if I want to, um, to give them longer time or accommodations. And then once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And this is going to take me back to my assignments. So here is my unnamed or my states quiz here that I created. Um, notice again, it hasn't been published yet. So once I'm ready for it to go live, I could either publish it the day of the quiz or I could choose the date and time that this would go live um, in like I would any other assignment to choose when it's going to show up. But then once I publish it, students will see that. And that's all there is to creating quizzes.